In order to work with snowflakes, I have to prepare the same way someone might for a mountain climb. Layer after layer, gloves, scarves, coats, the kind of cold where you can see your breath hanging heavy in the air. Because in order to catch snowflakes, everything has to stay below freezing. My tools, my trays, my hands, all of it. Each snowfall brings thousands of crystals, each one with its own geometry, each one existing for only a moment. I've been doing this for six years and I still feel that same rush every time a new flake lands on my tray. This process isn't new, though few people in the world practice it. In 1979, a scientist named Trigvi Immelsen first discovered how to preserve snowflakes using a water-reactive resin. Materials like polyvinyl, acetal, or cyanocryolate, the same family of chemicals that make up things like superglue, hairspray, and certain lacquers. What was once just a drop of household chemistry became a way to save the impossible, a snowflake that doesn't melt. When the resin meets the crystal, it hardens instantly, encasing the original lattice of ice in a transparent shell. Snowflake's exact geometry, a structure that took minutes to form in the sky, is now stabilized forever. I share this because I want people to know that the wild, impossible ideas in your mind aren't too far-fetched. What I do started with a single thought what if I could save just one snowflake? Now, years later, I've preserved hundreds. They've traveled the world, becoming jewelry, art, and keepsakes. If you have a vision, even if it feels impossible or strange, follow it, experiment, fail, and try again. That's how discoveries are made. That's how art is born. Snowflakes are reminders that beauty doesn't have to be permanent to be meaningful. But sometimes with patience, science, and a little courage, we can hold on to the beauty a little longer. This is the work of winter, a collaboration between the sky, the storm, and human hands. Real snowflakes preserved, kept alive in a way their natural world never intended. Proof that even the most fleeting moments can be saved. As the flake drifts through the sky, it passes through pockets of warmer and colder air, shaping its branches as it falls. A slight change in humidity or temperature can transform its design completely. That's why some snowfalls bring lacy, star-like flakes, while others bring simple, solid plates or columns. By the time a snowflake reaches the ground, it has carried with it the story of the atmosphere. The air is so cold that even when they are nudged or tossed by a breeze, the flakes stay perfectly solid, fragile but unbroken. From here, the work becomes even more delicate. Using a paintbrush, finer than a hair, I lift each flake onto a chilled microscope slide. My hands shake, not because of nerves, but because the room itself is freezing. There's no other way. If anything warms, even slightly, the snowflake vanishes before my eyes. Snowflakes may look delicate and random, but every one of them is built on strict geometry. Six branches, six sides, repeating patterns that echo across nature. The same hexagon we see in snowflakes also appears in honeycombs, in crystals, even in basalt columns of ancient lava flows. This order comes from the molecular structure of water itself. The angle at which hydrogen and oxygen atoms bond naturally creates a six-sided pattern, a tiny blueprint that repeats itself endlessly scaling up from the invisible to the visible. I'm not just seeing beauty, I'm seeing nature's mathematics, a universal language written in ice. Each crystal is proof that even in chaos, 
In a storm, in the rush of winter winds, there is still symmetry, balance, and order. Once the snowflakes are safely preserved, their journey isn't over. That's when the transformation begins. I carefully cut down each cured slide, trimming away until only the crystal remains. From there, I layer them with resin, setting them against gemstones or sterling silver, giving each flake a frame worthy of its beauty. It's meticulous work, every cut, every layer, every polish has to be precise. But it's also the most rewarding part of the process. This is where science meets art, where a frozen moment from the sky becomes something you can hold in your hands.